Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I have a book haul for y'all. <laughs> So these are all the books that I bought since my last book haul, I'm pretty sure. I haven't bought a lot, so yay me. But today I went to Half Price Books. You can check out, I put it in my recent reading vlog from Half Price Books because I wanted to and I haven't been in a very long time and I wanted to get some historical romances. So that's the majority of this haul and I bought most of the books from this haul in that trip. So first I'm going to talk about the four books that I did not get at Half Price Books that I've gotten since my last haul. First we have my current read which is After Hours Seduction by Janice Maynard. This is my first ever Harlequin book. This is the Harlequin Desire line. This is basically a second chance romance where our heroine works at this company and her ex, who's this man, is one of the head honcho, the bosses, and his two brothers are also the boss guys there, but she works under another brother, but they broke up, I think over two years ago, and he was in a skiing accident. His brothers have asked her to help him in this cabin in Maine and live with him for a little bit to help him with his work, but they don't know that they used to be together. So um, it's a second chance romance. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only on page like 20 something. So I'm very excited to continue. And then I received a copy from the publisher or the author of um, The Existence of Amy by Lana Grace Reba. I'll read the summary because I don't personally know much about this book. Amy has a normal life. That is, if you were to go by a definition of no obvious indicators of peculiarity and you didn't know her very well. She has good friends, a good job, a nice enough home. This normality, however, is precariously plastered on top of a different life, a life that is Amy's real life, the only one her brain will let her lead. I got an email about this book and I was given the summary and it just sounded so interesting to me and I needed to read it. Um, I think I'm going to be doing a reading vlog very soon where I read three books that were sent to me, two other ones were e-books. Um, so I think that would be an amazing reading vlog, just me reading these um, books that were sent to me so i'm very excited to read this one as well also thank you for sending me this book thank you next of course i had to purchase midnight sun by stephanie meyer the new book in the twilight series this is twilight on the perspective of edward i've already read and it's amazing i love it <laughs> I will talk about it more in my August wrap-up. I had so much fun reading this and I'm so glad that I got myself this copy and it is a chunky monkey of a book. As you can see, it is huge. And then the last book that I purchased that is not from Half Price Books that I got today is Single Dating Engaged Married by Ben Stewart. My best friend is reading this book currently and this deals a lot with Christianity and how it involves singleness dating engagement and being married and it also like interweaves scripture in there i'm only going to read the first two because they're in all sections and i was advised to not read the other two because i'm not even close to the other two at all i'm probably not even close to the dating one but anyway i'm just very excited to read this and like possibly connect to this author who interweaves their faith into being with someone which is what i want so I am very excited to read this one also. So all the rest of these books, I got half price books. The majority of them are historical romances. I'm going to get the two that are not historical romances out of the way. First one that I got is Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer, which you're probably asking yourself, Avery, why did you buy another version of Breaking Dawn? I will tell you why. Right here, this is a special edition sticker. And I was like, what does that mean? So when you open it in the back, there's a CD, it's called Breaking Dawn Concert Series. There's this little poster that comes with it. I think that has the lyrics on it. I can only play CDs in my car or my computer. We will see how I will listen to this. It gets even better, it gets even better. You know why? The dust jacket comes off to reveal Ed Ed Edward and Bella. I'm putting this up in my room. You bet your bottom dollar I spent that $10 for this book because of that. And also apparently in the back there's like an explanation and an interview about Breaking Dawn concert series, which I will be reading very soon and looks like there's some music lyrics in here. Again, very happy that I got this book. I got that poster out of it. 
I'm so happy about it. And then the other book that I got at Half Price Books that isn't a historical romance is A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole. This is a paranormal romance. The first book in the Immortals After Dark series. I've heard great things about this series. I really want to dive into it. Look at this cover. <laughs> Look at this cover. I'm so happy that I finally have this book because I really want to read it. I want to start the series. Jen from the Book Refuge and Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers talk about this series all the time and I need to start it. It sounds so good. It deals with vampires, I'm pretty sure. Sounds amazing. I love vampires. <laughs> okay, all the rest are historical romances, which I'm very excited to share with y'all. The first book that I found is this one. It's called Ravenburn by Laura Black, a novel of tangled desires and forbidden love by the author of Glenn Draco. It has pretty yellow pages. I think I'm just gonna read the backs for y'all because I don't know anything about them. She felt alone and unloved in her tower room at Castle Raven. Too nervous, her stepmother and doctor agreed to bear the strain of Victorian society. Too much in the shade of her fashionable half-sister to be sought after. Yet Catherine found joy in her books and in her freedom to explore the wild Scottish countryside. Then one day she discovered a man in hiding on a deserted island in the stream. A man destined to turn her from a shy recluse into a beauty, to involve her in adventure and intrigue. He was not the man she believed him to be, but then again, she was not the girl she thought she was. So this has a bookish heroine and it is Scottish. Right when I saw the word book and Scottish in there, I put it in my cart. I am so excited to read this one. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. It's very big. Some of these I couldn't even find on Goodreads. Like Goodreads wouldn't scan them. Next, I found Gentle Fury by Monica Berry. Here's the cover for this one. For three long years, T. Bennett had followed her father's orders. She's run the ranch and cared for her two sisters. Then she received a letter from General Bennett. Now she was to give the herd to a stranger, Aaron Barkley, who would drive them to California and she would join her father back in Philadelphia. But T didn't trust Aaron, not his good looks, nor his kind manner. She would match her will against his, her heart against his passion. I've never read a, I think I've only read one historical romance that takes place in the US. So I thought this would be a very fun place to start. This smells like an old book. Ugh. I love it. <laughs> then I found Charming the Prince by Teresa Meder... I can't pronounce that. Medi... Med... Eros. That. <laughs> I probably butchered that. I'm so sorry. But this is like a fairy tale-esque historical romance. And here is the step back when you open it. <laughs> I went in this store and looked at literally almost every single historical romance book to look for setbacks. I found some amazing ones. I couldn't buy all of them, obviously, but hopefully they'll be there when I go back whenever I want. Dear reader, my enemies know me as Lord Banner, the bold, pride of the English and terror of the French. Never in my life have I backed down from any challenge or betrayed so much as a hint of fear until the war ended and I found myself a reluctant papa to a dozen unruly children. Realizing I couldn't lop their little heads off or throw them in the dungeon, I sent my steward out to find them a mother and me a bride, an unattractive, meek, maternal creature too plain to tempt me to get her with child. You can imagine my horror when he returns with Lady Willow of Bedlington, a spirited beauty who made me think of nothing else. With her cloud of dark curls and the sparkle of passion in her eyes, Willow was everything I'd sworn to resist. I never dreamed she would join forces with those mischievous imps of mine to teach this cynical warrior just how sweet surrender can be. That sounded so good. I'm so excited to read like all of these. That sounded so good. I love historical romances where the man really needs a wife and he goes and gets one, but he just needs a wife in name he doesn't want to fall in love but then the person that he finds to just be his wife he ends up falling in love with like it's so good i love that trope so very much so again very excited for this one next i found an absolute gem gentle rogue by joanna lindsay this very old school cover the spine isn't even cracked y'all it's brand spanking new it seems like I am so happy that I found this. Joy Lindsay is definitely an author I want to get more into. I think I've read two of her books before and I just can't wait to read even more of hers. They had a bunch of options for me to choose from, but I promised myself I would only buy one. I can't spend all my money. Um, so I'm so happy that I picked this one up. Her heart trampled and torn, innocent Georgina Anderson was desperate to return home to America. Leaving her sorrows on England's shores, she defiantly boarded the gentleman's ship, made an Anne, disguised as a cabin boy, never dreaming, She'd be forced into intimate servitude to the irrepressible 
irrepressible rake Captain James Mallory, a handsome ex-pirate, the black sheep of a proud and tempestuous family. Mallory swore no woman alive would entice him into matrimony, but on the high seas, he would be bested by a high-spirited beauty whose love of freedom and adventure rivaled his own and by an inescapable tidal wave of passion that threatened to engulf them both. Very excited. I don't know what else to say besides that I'm excited for these books because I am. I found Marrying Winterborn by Lisa Kleypas. I just finished the first book in this series and I actually really enjoyed it and I was so excited to start this one. I can't wait to listen to the audiobook for it. It's waiting patiently in my library for me. Um, but here is the step back for that one. I loved this couple in the first one. Like I love their dynamic and I want to know what happens to them in the first one. So again, I'm very excited for this one. This is obviously a historical romance. And in the first one, the couple was engaged and then they weren't engaged. And so this book just explores them more, which I'm very excited about. Next, I found an absolute beautiful book. We have The Lily and the Leopard by Susan Wiggs. Okay, here is what it looks like, like this. And there's the spine, it's really cracked, but I don't care. And there's the back. But then when you open it, here is this gorgeous step back. Look at that. That's beautiful. This one takes place in France. I've never read historical set in France. France in 1414 was a country at war, overrun within by marauding knights and besieged from without an ambitious English king. England in 1414 was ruled by King Henry V, a driven monarch who was determined to regain his French lands, even if it meant war. Liliana of France was mistress of a great castle in Normandy. Rand of England was King Henry's most fearless and trusted warrior. They were fated to meet in a sunny forest glade, just as their countries were fated to meet on the battlefield of Agincourt. Their turbulent yet triumphant love story symbolized the clash of two mighty nations. With them, the lily and the leopard could be united, finally, under one banner. So it's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet-esque story with like a French girl and an English man and like that sounds so good. This one I bought because of the step back. I didn't even read the summary, <laughs> but this one is A Love for All Time by Sandra Davidson. Beautiful. And then when you open it up, look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh my word. <laughs> Spine isn't even cracked. And the back is pretty too. From the moment she first stood beside it at the ancient tombstone, Summer Winslow was haunted by tantalizing visions of Colonel John Hawk, a man who had lived more than two centuries ago. Then Summer suddenly found herself swept back in time to witch burning Massachusetts and the darkened bedroom of a magnificent estate. She turned and walked straight into John Hawk's virile embrace. Trapped in another era, a prisoner of his endless desires, Summer knew his fevered kisses were her destiny. His ardent caresses her fate. Even if she had to change the course of history, she would find a way to lie in his arms for always. The instant she stumbled into his waiting arms, John Hawk knew that at last he'd found the bewitching silken-skinned beauty who'd consumed his dreams for many a night. A wanton enchantress, she tempted him with her sensuous smile and santony flesh, enticed him with the promise of endless nights of rapture. Neither a world on the brink of war, nor even history itself, would ever come between him and the woman who had inflamed his passions and stolen his heart, who would be his, he vowed, until the end of time. That sounds amazing. It's like, a, like, like an Outlander book. If you love Outlander, I guess you should probably check this one out. I then found like a holographic book. I don't know if it'll show. This one is called The Hellion Bride by Catherine Coulter. And you can maybe, maybe tell a little bit it's holographic. Like if I do that, it's so pretty. It feels so cool. Oh, and then here is the beautiful two page step back. They're like on a beach. <laughs> and also the back is holographic too, which is so cool. Writer Sherbrooke is a fun loving rake with a secret. When he travels to Jamaica to solve the mystery of the supernatural goings on 
At the Sherbrooke Sugar Plantation, he finds another mystery as well. A sophisticated 19-year-old girl, Sophia Stanton Greville, who wants to bed him. And not, he believes, because she is simply enthralled with his handsome self or his boundless charm. Sophia has successfully controlled every man in her orbit until she meets writer Sherbrooke, a man she knows immediately is different from the others, a man she sees as one of Hell's own sons. Writer, confident as only a successful rake can be when it comes to knowing women, sets out to teach her who is in charge. It's said she's already had three lovers. Is she indeed the outrageous tease she appears, seductress, or is she an innocent with an ugly and terrifying secret? I just couldn't pass up this beautiful, beautiful book. I've never seen a holographic book like this before. So I also found another Lisa Kleypas. We have Prince of Dreams, and then when you open the step back is this old school romance cover, which is beautiful. I love like the rainbow right here. A wealthy and bitter exile, the most dangerous and desirable man in all of England, he burns to possess a proud, headstrong beauty who is promised to another. But winning Emma Stokehurst's exquisite hand through threats and determination does nothing to fill the empty spaces in Nicholas's heart until passion's magic carries the handsome, tormented prince back to a begone era of splendor and romantic dreams. For there his destiny awaits him in a distant life, and in one remarkable woman's tender touch, achingly familiar but gloriously new, he must seek the elusive promise of ecstasy and learn, at last, to love. Another Lisa Kleypas from my Lisa Kleypas collection, which is slowly growing, and I'm very excited to have this very old school cover of hers. We're finally at our last book for this haul, and this one is probably my favorite when it comes to the way it looks. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's, I'm like, it's so, so beautiful. Okay, this one is called The Gentle Beast by Colleen Shannon. So here is the cover. She's in this beautiful dress and he is wearing this mask and then there's this little indent right here because the step back goes out like this and then you have them together it is beautiful i i love this cover this is also a fairy tale romance so i'm very excited to know what that means raised amid bountiful wealth and enlightened ideas callista Rayleigh was more than a match for the radicals and rakes who railed against england's king george iii then a sudden reversal of fortune brought into her life a veritable brute who craved revenge against her family almost as much as he hungered for her kiss even though her passionate foe concealed his face behind a hideous mask Callista believed he was merely a man with a man's strengths and appetites. But when the love-starved stranger swept her away to a secret lair, Callista realized that wits and reason weren't enough to conquer him. She'd need a desire both satisfying and true if beauty were to tame the beast. So it looks like it's a Beauty of the Beast retelling, which sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited for this one. So there you have it. These are some of the historical romances that just fell <laughs> um, that I bought recently that I am very excited to dive into. I'm so happy that my historical romance collection is like slowly growing because I absolutely love this genre and I wanna read more in it. And I'm so happy that my bookstore had a bunch of them for me to choose from. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye.